Dennis, hello. Hello. You may begin. Oh, me? Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome to Sprint 123 Review, uh, the Sprint ending October 28th. Next slide, please. So I'll go over the statistics. Uh, Harpreet will give us some information on the UI. Adam will do providers. Joe on the platform. Martin will give us API updates. Mike will tell us about QE, and then we'll have a summary. Next slide, please. So good, good trend here. Uh, the number of PRs opened uh, went up this sprint a uh, bit, and the numbers closed and still up and going down. So we're in a, on a good trend. Next slide, please. So we had a pretty even split between enhancements and bugs, and uh, uh, test had a lot of uh, work this this past sprint. We're going to take a look at this slide going forward because, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a lot of PRs have multiple labels, and this so the multiple counts. So we may change this uh, this slide for the next sprint. We'll see. Uh, next slide, please. And there seems to be something with the data for uh, for this overall report. Um, we're taking a look at it, like in particular, like the UI Classic, number of other issues. I know the VMware line had some some things we weren't sure about. So we're taking a look at um, what the issue is with the numbers, and then just in general, is is there a better way to to, to show this data going forward? Next slide, please. And off to Vipreet. Total 32 PRs merged across the UI repos. Out of that, there were three enhancements, 17 bug fixes, and so on. For enhancements during the sprint, Red Hat Dropbox support to upload log files was removed, and that has been replaced with Red Hat support tool. There are other things that are currently being worked on and should be merged in next sprint or so. And for the bugs, um, if a user is a is part of multiple groups when trying to switch the group. User was getting logged out of the UI, so a fix was made in that area. Um, a fix was made on generic object type custom button edit screen when trying to edit a custom button there. The form was not loading the value for the request field, which is a required field, so that was forcing user to re-enter that again. Um, a fix was made to not display two back buttons on policy simulation screen. And on the compare screen, user could unselect all the checkboxes on the left and could press apply button, but doing that was not changing contents on the screen. So a fix was made to disable the apply button to force user to at least select one section to load compare results. Um, and a double render error was fixed when trying to perform certain actions on host aggregates to cloud provider relationship. A fix was made to prevent an error pop up on screen when pressing a delete button for custom buttons or custom button groups uh, from the generic objects area. And um, toolbars were converted to React during last sprint that introduced few issues. So those were addressed. There were some issues with toolbar groups not getting closed properly. So that was fixed and um, change in this. PR also supports use of keyboard in the dropdowns. Another fix was made in toolbars to remove empty groups, and some other exceptions were fixed as well. And that's all I have for the UI. Over to Adam. Thanks, Harpreet. On the Amazon side, Alex Z completed a, a long-running set of work which upgrades us to the V3 AWS SDK. Uh, so this was released a while ago, but it was a pretty significant change to the structure of the gem, so it took us a while to actually get moved over to it. Specifically, it split up essentially one monolith uh, gem that had all the APIs under it into individual uh, sub-gems, and so it took a while to figure out what services we needed to require in different places, but overall it should let us reduce the overall memory usage because we're not loading one mega gem uh, when we only really use three or four services out of it. So. Uh, that was a really, really nice uh, enhancement to get in. OpenStack fixed some issues with the event collection with the Panko service. If you're using all tenants, there's a problem with the V2 version of Keystone where it rejected all tenants and didn't work properly. So now um, that they uh, had a fix for that. Uh, they also fixed an issue with AMQP events. So even though AMQP is deprecated, there were some problems uh, where customers were still using it with uh, multiple EMSs. So 
we were doing using the queue name based on the uh, EMS name, but if you have multiple EMSs, they had different EMS IDs, and so there were some collisions, and so we just included the EMS ID into the queue name to fix that collision. Next slide. Uh, so they uh, over a couple of sprints ago only allowed graph refresh as the refresh option. So you know, reducing some of the options that, that customers can tweak and also improving the performance. So now that that's there, uh, he, we deleted all the old refresh code, which was a lot of <laughs> code. Uh, most of that's honestly VCRs. Uh, they had specific VCRs for the different refresh modes, but there was still a lot of actual code uh, that was able to be deleted. So that was really great. Uh, the, uh, Roberto also fixed an issue where there was a network API call being done during the specs and it was failing due to a timeout because it couldn't hit what it was trying to hit uh, and then continued on with the fallback so it looked like everything was working but it was actually hitting timeouts and then falling back to, uh, to other code so it was slowing it down pretty significantly so stubbed that API call out so now it's much faster which is great. Uh, I duplicated the OpenStack section so just ignore that. Uh, core. Uh, Let's see, Keenan made a nice change to schedule metrics collection per EMS instead of per zone. Uh, this is going to be enabling future performance enhancements which relate to grouping targets by EMS, where currently we just blindly collect one target at a time, so it doesn't really matter what EMS the target is from. But uh, if we want to group targets, we need to be asking uh, a single EMS for a group of, uh, of targets, and so this is going to let us in future uh, Future sprints make those performance enhancements. And I made a change to allow plugins to bring their own reports. This is part of our continuing uh, work on making core more pluggable. And so anything that's seeded uh, right now is able to be brought from either core or from a plugin. Uh, so we finished up all the seedable uh, things. They did scan profiles in the last sprint and reports with the last one this sprint. And that's it for providers. Over to Joe. Thank you, Adam. I had to find my unmute button. Sorry about that. 39 PRs were merged across the platform space this print, many of which were um, updates made by Joe R to upgrade our Ruby testing, but I'll get to that in a sec. Um, starting with enhancements, Joe R and Dan contributed uh, gem version updates for Puma, this file system, and config gems. Eden contributed a couple of enhancements that will allow Active Record to construct the ARL. Or I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm just guessing A R E L for virtual total attributes to support has many with the through parameter, and another performance enhancement to add indices to various tables. Dan contributed an enhancement to comply with Ruby best practices, which dictate if method missing is implemented in a class, the response to missing query method should also be implemented. Libor made an enhancement that will allow performance reports to be generated for a specific date range. Nick C contributed an enhancement to use PostgreSQL 10 since we no longer need PG log. We no longer need PG logical as we're using the built-in logical replication. Nick C also made an enhancement to Linux admin by adding an option to the start method, allowing the service to also be enabled in a single stop call. For bugs, Yuri fixed one where the report data view table sorting wasn't properly working. JAR addressed a bug where constantizing errors were being logged. And Brandon addressed a bug reported against the appliance console related to setting date and time. The solution was truly brilliant and it will make JAR giddy because he simply deleted the functionality from the appliance console. The old doctor, doctor, if this hurts, this hurts, we'll stop doing that. Okay, kidding aside, um, setting date and time can be done in the cockpit UI now, so we don't need to support it in the appliance console. Um, Nick L fixed a bug where an undefined method was being logged during scheduled manifest backups. Next slide, please. For technical debt, Libor addressed some technical debt by completing, completely removing the MIQ expressions method get call type and he removed parse field or tag from the MIQ expressions operands to Ruby values. And you added a migration to remove the no longer used Rails server setting from the manage IQ schema. Oleg contributed a refactoring PR to use the faster maneuverable reverse each method over the dot 
each loop. And Keenan did some refactoring to avoid swamping the appliance running all tasks at startup. And Dan contributed some refactoring to improve some spec tests. And the last slide, please. Next slide, please. There we go. And for Ruby and Rails upgrade, uh, Nixie made a couple of PRs to update the containers to uh, newer Ruby. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, Jar had done quite a bit of work uh, to upgrade the Rubies we test with to the latest 2.5 and 2.6. And even though it's beyond the scope of, of this uh, slide, I also included the PRs for this work that he had done for the providers just to get a feel for how extensive all this work was. Um, and that's it for the uh, platform space. On to the API and Martin, take it away. Okay, so uh, we had uh, two groups of enhance enhancements in this in this print. The first one is uh, the edit support for tagging for cloud tenants and cloud volumes. The work was started by Brett Logan and I just finished it. So here you can see an example of uh, of getting uh, the tags uh, under uh, uh, cloud tenants. Next slide. So this is the other group where Daniel Berger added the uh, zones and regions editing. Again, here is a simple example where you can see that we are using the edit action and uh, supplying the resource and we are changing the description. Uh, a bit more work was done, some hardening work and uh, some improvements to logging by Martin H. That's all from the API. Uh, next slide, please. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, we had a ton of uh, content and contributions to uh, integration tests in this sprint. Uh, we have a, a new first level reviewer, uh, Ganesh Shubale from Pune team. Uh, we have tagged a 17.61.0 release, but have not merged to downstream stable uh, as we were unable to do our usual weekend uh, release candidate testing. Uh, overall, we had 70 PRs contributed uh, with 19 automating uh, existing manual test coverage, uh, 14 adding new test coverage, 9 PRs fixing test coverage, and 11 PRs that were enhancements uh, either to the test framework or to test fixtures. Uh, we had a major reorganization of our Sprout tasks by Yevgens Polsky, uh, who organized our tasks into uh, various classes depending on uh, what type of task they were, uh, and then defined high, medium, and low priority queues uh, to manage those tasks. Uh, this is for the, the Sprout tool that's available in. Uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, I won't necessarily read through every one of these lines. Uh, this is not even all of the uh, PRs that were uh, significant test contributions this sprint. Uh, we had uh, a ton of automation for uh, automate domain uh, from Ganesh Shubale, including uh, email content uh, for provisioning requests that exceeded quota uh, and for get automate uh, domain import. We had uh, automation from Parthvi for filtering of the report content uh, and for Intel report folder and subfolder recruit uh, and tests for report schedules uh, with user emails. Uh, Niaz automated uh, importing service dialogues and moved flash message assertions from the framework and from the model into the test, a great test enhancement. Um, Satyat uh, contributed Ansible service tests uh, for uh, BZ coverage. Uh, Nandini contributed tests for uh, tenant uh, testing EMS group CRUD uh, as a tenant admin user. Uh, and added manual coverage for EMS user CRUD uh, as a tenant admin. Uh, John Dupuy updated our breadcrumb and reader direction tests uh, for services with generic objects. Angelina uh, added tests for reverting snapshots on active VMs uh, and the fact that that is not allowed. Um, Yaroslav uh, added 
tests for stack provisioning and retirement and uh, contributed a bunch of fixes uh, for some of those existing tests. Matos uh, contributed a test for EC2 provider CRUD using STS CRUD or credentials with role assumption. Um, and then uh, Justin Watts has been updating our uh, rel updates markers for our tests uh, to improve our coverage for interop testing. Uh, and PJ Richardson enhanced our uh, grid tile and list page reading uh, by allowing to uh, slice elements on that page early in the process so that we don't have to read all of them. And that is it for QE. Thanks. And that concludes the uh, Sprint 123 review. The next Sprint review will be November 13th for Sprint 124. See you Any all then. Any questions? Any questions, anybody? <laughs> Comments? Almost got away with it. <laughs> Old jokes? No? We're good? No, no comments. <laughs> Old jokes are the only jokes Greg has. That's right. That's <laughs> true. That's and true. I used them up. All early. right. <laughs> I'll see you folks in a couple of weeks then. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.